What's going on guys? We are live in the Facebook group. How is everyone doing? Um, so like I said, Q&A time. And what I'll probably do is I'll just start off with the questions that I got on Instagram and then we'll move over to the questions that I got on Facebook if, uh, if any of you guys have any questions. Um, so first question is books to learn Facebook ads. If I've got any recommendations for books. It's, it's difficult to have a specific book that is uh, obviously relevant for Facebook ads. The way the industry is shifting, it's very, very difficult to bring out content uh, in the form of a book that is you know, obviously going to keep you guys up to date on what works and what doesn't work with Facebook ads. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend a book for Facebook ads in general. If I were to recommend a book on marketing in general, uh, there are a few that you know, have come to mind. Cash for Tizen is one that I highly recommend. Um, obviously the book Breakthrough Advertising, a bit old school, but again, a very, very good book. Those are probably the two that I'd start with. And then alongside that, I'd look at a bit more like generic business type books. That will never work. The Netflix book um, and then Shoe Dog, the book about Nike. Those two books are books that I recommend. Just to give you guys a bit of insight into how you can pivot and how you can tweak and change your offer to make sure that you do have that product market fit and then basically you know, uh, scale up that brand. But in terms of actual marketing that is relevant to Facebook, cash advertising and break for advertising, and then like actual physical you know, books on uh, Facebook ads, there aren't many out there. One that I would recommend is an ebook. It's called Into the Funnel, which is uh, written by Aaron Kaiser, who is obviously my business partner on Consultex. Very, very relevant book still to this day. Um, he's also made some changes to make it relevant for post iOS 14. But yeah, highly recommend you guys check that out if you haven't done so already. Um, second question, what, uh, so do you teach Facebook ads? Yes, so both programs, uh, Lifestyle Design Mastery as well as Consultex go very heavy into Facebook ads. It's something that I've noticed the industry is very much lagging in. Um, a lot of, um, and Andrea says, is this even truly live? Yes, it is, man. It's, it's, uh, it is live. Um, but yeah, so in terms of Facebook uh, ads, I think that is something that is not being taught a lot in the industry. And quite frankly, the reason being is because a lot of these gurus that are teaching how to start agencies, they don't know themselves. Either they outsource it to a media buyer and, you know, obviously the media buyer has all the knowledge and the know-how and they do not or they don't run an agency themselves anymore. They're just teaching the business model, which means that they don't really know what is happening currently in the industry when it comes to Facebook ads. Um, and you know, obviously it is a bit more difficult to teach people Facebook ads than it is to teach people how to do outreach. So a lot of people shy away from that. And the reason why I've obviously decided to teach Facebook ads, Andrea, Andrea says, okay, great. Yeah, man, good stuff. Any questions, Andrea, just let me know, man. And uh, I'm happy to answer them. But yeah, the reason why I have actually decided to teach Facebook ads with the programs is because I very much focus on the fulfillment side of things. And I strongly believe that if your service delivery is on point, if you're getting your client's results, the clients will, number one, not leave you. Number two, refer you on to other business. And if you have good back-end deals in place, which means that you get a percentage of, let's say, for example, the ad spend, a percentage of revenue, etc then obviously you can grow alongside those businesses as well. And you don't need 20, 30, 40 clients to scale up to a seven figure business or scale up to a certain point where you're happy with your agency because you can do that with a select few clients and just grow alongside them. You know, I always use the example of um, if you want to grow up to seven figures, so a million a year, you'd have to have 83,000 in recurring revenue per month. If you're only charging 1,000 a month, that means you'll need 83 clients in order to achieve that. And you need to make sure that all 83 clients stay with you for, you know, obviously 12 months. If you have a percentage of revenue or a percentage of ad spend, you might not need 83 clients. You can actually hit seven figures with only 20 clients, provided that those clients are big enough. How do you get those big, big clients? By getting results for the medium sized clients and growing them up to be the big, big clients or by you know, getting such good results for those medium-sized clients that those medium-sized clients refer you on to other business, okay? So those big, big clients that you can scale up, you either get them as a referral or you build them up yourself, okay? It's very difficult to get big, big whale-type clients 
uh, that are willing to stay for a long period of time and willing to give you a piece of the pie, it's very hard to get them with cold outreach. So for anyone here that wants to sign those whale type clients, and I mean true whale type clients, the best way to do it is, like I said, referrals and to basically create them yourself. Andrea says, how do you keep your knowledge up to date? Are there any role models you follow, look up to regarding the agency and media buying? Um, so obviously people that I connect with are, so people in my direct network sort of, those are people that are doing the same as me or even better than I am. So it's very easy to see what is currently working in the industry and what isn't uh, based off of their feedback. And also by having conversations with these people that helps me sort of, you know, uh, brainstorm and it's also, you know, sparks idea ideas in my mind as well. And that is why I truly recommend, you know, you guys join the masterminds as well, because it's not only what you get taught during those masterminds, but it's also by, you know, you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people and people that are on your level, if not on a high level that you can learn from as well. And having people like that in your community, having people like that in your direct network will truly help you forward. So for example, on the previous mastermind, we had a systems expert, we had an email marketing expert, we had a tracking expert, you know, we had uh, peak performers and so on and so forth, which means that if I need help in any of those situations or any of those areas, then I've got someone in my direct network that can help me with that. And that obviously only comes when you're in situations like, for example, those masterminds. So um, I hope that sort of answers your question. And then in terms of like the knowledge and how to stay up to date, uh, because I'm managing over 20 clients, I can sort of spot trends very, very easily, especially in my own niche. Um, so if I, if I notice that, for example, that I'm a creative on broad is working for one client, I'll try that out on clients, clients two and three. If it works for them as well, then I'll roll that out for all of my clients. So usually it's just proactively spotting trends and also proactively testing out different things and different angles. And what worked a few months ago might not work now or vice versa. What did work um, or what didn't work a few months ago will actually start to work now. You know, ABO, CBO, Dynamic Creative, Static Images, Carousels, Videos, those are things that I'm always testing because you never know when the sort of next trend picks up. So uh, yeah, hope that helps. Next question, what's the difference between Lifestyle Design Mastery and Consult X? Uh, good question, to be fair. I know that I'm not very clear on that quite often. Um, and the reason why I'm unclear on that is because it's not necessarily, oh, you're doing less than 10K a month, you're the perfect fit for Lifestyle Design Mastery, or, oh, you're doing more than 10K a month, you know, you need to look into Consult X. It sort of depends on where you're currently at uh, with your business and what you want out of your agency. And then I'll basically figure out, you know, which program will fit you best. So to put this into simple terms, Lifestyle Design Mastery is more tailored towards beginners. So the help, the guidance and advice you get in that program will be for people that are um, either have one client or zero clients and want to get started and scale up to six figures. Then Consult X is more about scaling your ads by setting up better deals with your clients. So looking at those backend deals, looking at getting percentages of ad spend, percentages of revenue, etc. And that's why I've also partnered up with Aaron Kaiser on this because I know that he is you know, the, the, the boss when it comes to setting up backend deals so that you don't necessarily need a lot of clients to get up to very juicy numbers in terms of monthly recurring revenue. So simply put, if you are starting out, Lifestyle Design Mastery is probably the way to go. And then if you want to scale up and restructure your agency in terms of getting better deals and also putting yourself on the back end so that your front end is automated, then I would look into Consult X. But in both situations, I'd probably book a call with us first to see which one is the right program for you. So uh, yeah, hope that answers your question. Uh, do you teach Facebook ads? I've basically discussed that. Do you still use interest or are you all in on broad? This depends on the clients to be fair. Um, so if broad works, then I'm all in on broad. But if broad doesn't work, then I will look at interest to see, okay, is there a specific or particular interest that I can get results with? What I do think is that interest-based targeting is a short-term solution. If you truly wanna scale up your clients, then broad, in my opinion, again, you know, this is just based on my own experience, is the way to go. Because the broad audience is obviously the largest audience. There's nothing more frustrating than, you know, picking a specific interest that does work, but then you basically, you know, you go through that entire audience of that interest 
your frequency goes up and your ROAS goes down, your cost of purchase goes up and your client is unhappy and you're left scrambling trying to figure out what the next best interest is. So if you can get your creatives and your product and your, your client's brand to work on broad, that is the best situation to be in. And that is sort of what I always try and aim for. But like I said, you know, if I want a short term fix, I will always look at interest to see if I can get to that point. And you can scale interests up, you know, to let's say three to 500 a month, uh, a day, sorry. But there will be a point that if you truly want to scale up your client's brand, you will need to move to broad or figure out a way to get broad to work. Uh, how to scale your agency. Yeah, I sort of already discussed this, guys. It, it is, you know, it's, it, I think it's those back-end deals. So making sure that you get a piece of the pie when you let your clients win. So the more money you make your clients, the more money you make yourself. Um, I think personally gone are the days of just the fixed retainer. There are so many bad, it starts off with the courses, obviously. There are so many gurus out there that teach a bad way or an old way or an outdated way of doing social media marketing which means, but these guys, you know, they don't know any better. So then you've got these agencies that go out trying to get these clients, which they might do, but then they fail to get those clients results. Then those clients become more skeptical about, skeptical, sorry, about agencies, which means that we need to put, you know, put our neck on the line to convince those clients that we are the, you know, the right agency for them. So by putting a performance-based deal in place or working purely off performance, which I don't really recommend, but you know, some clients uh, actually want that, then by doing that, you can prove to the uh, clients that you're not just there for the retainer, you're not just there for the 90-day accelerator, which I see a lot of people still doing. Um, you know, you are willing to actually put in the work, put in the efforts to get results. And of course, when you do get those clients that you can scale to the moon, you get a bigger piece of the pie than just that fixed retainer. And of course, it keeps you guys motivated as well. You know, um, if I know that I'm just getting a fixed retainer and it's working and, you know, I check every day, we're getting sales, the ROAS is good, then obviously I'm not gonna look at that account as often as is frequent. Whereas if I know that I'm getting a piece of the back end, then I'll try and scale and optimize as much as I possibly can because I know every single sale counts for me as well. So that is how, in my opinion, I think you're best scaling your agency. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, how to get results for dentists. That's a specific one, man. Um, so I've actually run a lot of dentist ads uh, for clients in the past. This is all you know, pre-COVID, pre-iOS 14. So that is a bit of a disclaimer. What I'd probably do is I would focus on something free. So a free consultation or a free checkup, anything like that. Why? So you can get those people in. Um, so the way I did it was pre-COVID. So I just, you know, basically uh, let them book an, uh, an appointment online through Calendly. They'll physically show up to that appointment. And then from there, the dentist would actually upsell them on a subscription, a service, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not 100% sure how that works now. You know, are we completely back to pre-COVID situations or is there still some kind of online consultation taking place? The honest answer is I do not know, um, but that is how I would structure it. Something free on the front end and then let the dentist upsell them on the back end. And of course, the more of that funnel that you can take control of, the uh, less likely that dentist is to leave because um, you know, they're sort of reliant on you, your funnel and your service. So one thing that I actually used to do was I used to uh, build out the funnel as well on my click funnels which meant that if the dentist left me, then they'd lose the entire funnel, which made it more difficult for them to leave, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, like I said, disclaimer, I do not run ads for dentists anymore. Um, you know, all my clients are now uh, e-commerce or info product type clients. So um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what is working at the moment for the dentist niche. Um, another question, do we have extra large in the More Life hoodie? Um, oh, that's a good question as well. I don't actually know what stock, we've, we've got some stock left. We will not be doing another drop or I won't be restocking those items. Um, if you guys want to check out what products or what sizes we've still got left, it's still the one product, sorry, what sizes we've got left, then just check out morelifegarments.com and see if your size is still available. Um, if it is, then you're lucky. If not, you know, uh, you're lost basically because not getting restocked. Um, and then we have Andrea says, any advice on how to get the first clients or media buying side without any case study? How did you start out at the very beginning? 
Um, so at the beginning, I actually did have a media buyer to run the ads. Uh, long story short, the media buyer was not good, but that is sort of how I did get my first few clients. And then after a while, once I realized that these media buyers had no idea what they were doing, I sort of jumped in and started doing the ads myself. So I sort of cheated my way into getting my first few clients because um, we just leveraged the case studies of the media buyer. Even though the case studies were not actually that good, this was all pre iOS 14, you know, this is like 2018, uh, 2017, 2018. So it was much easier back then. But then I already had those clients and then I stepped in to get, you know, uh, stepped in to do the work myself. And then from that point onwards, I um, basically leveraged the, the results that I was getting, you know, into my own portfolio. And then I started using my own portfolio to get more clients in. Um, what I'd probably recommend is slightly different than what I hear a lot of people saying, but I would recommend actually doing it for free, even if it's just for two weeks or for a month. And that client that you are then doing, you know, there's the, the, the way for free for will never be a big client, will never be a paying client or anything like that, or, you know, a large paying client. Um, but as long as you know that, that's fine. Just use that client purely to get portfolio material and then use that portfolio material or, you know, create a case study out of it and then you can go and start getting larger clients in. So at the start, I would recommend working for free. Just know that that client will never be a very big paying client or paying clients in general. And that's fine because we've got something much more valuable. We've got experience and we've got portfolio material. So hope that helps. Um, that was it in terms of the, let me see if I missed any. No, that is it in terms of the Instagram questions. Um, I don't think this, I don't actually know how to go back to the post to see if there's any questions on the post. So uh, anyone here on the live, I think we've got five viewers at the moment. Feel free to drop your question. And if not, well, then we'll probably just wrap it up here. Andreas says, thanks. You're welcome, man. Hope that helped. Any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, we'll give it another like 20 seconds or so. And then what I'll probably do is I'll also upload this to YouTube. And if you guys have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, make sure you check it out. There's a lot of content on there. A lot of uh, you know videos on how I run Facebook ads, how I run the agency, and everything's basically documented from when I just started out. So if you guys find that interesting, uh, feel free to check that out. And yeah, it doesn't look like there's a lot of new comments or questions coming up. So you'll probably wrap up this live here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, then feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you guys are watching this in the Facebook group, thanks for watching. Any questions that you still have, feel free to just send me a message via DM or post them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. But yeah, for now, that is me wrapping up. I'll speak to you guys in the next one.